Hello and welcome to the Unit 3 podcast on Section 8.1. Today we're going to talk about forming um, some bonds and kind of introducing the concept of chemical bonding. I'm Mr. Sakaguchi. And again, I'm Mr. Lin. And here we go. Same as last time. Chemical bonds. Chemical bonds are basically forces that hold atoms together. Um, the force of attraction could be many different things. Um, it could be oppositely charged ions coming together. It could be the force between nuclei attracting electrons in between it. Or it could be um, um, polar, polar. Um, an unfair sharing of electrons between the two nuclei. As well as se uh, separate molecules attracting each other as well. Right. Um, valence electrons are basically the centerpiece of this. And the elements themselves will help us dictate which of these many different kinds of bonds will actually happen. As well as in what ratio? Um, just so you know, there's some things you should remember from the previous unit. Um, you should remember your dot structures because we're going to be using those in examples quite a bit. Ionization energy also plays a part in, in uh, chemical bonds. Also something known as electron affinity, which is loosely related to electronegativity, so it's attractions to electrons. Um, and just like how nonmetals have high electronegativities, they also have high affinities for electrons as well. Remember that the end goal for these chemical bonds is so that the elements or the individual atoms can get the electron, uh, the electron configuration of a noble gas. So they want to fill out uh, their, their valence shells. Right. So let's first talk about the formation of cations. And here when we're talking about cations, we're talking about electron loss. Okay. So with representative elements, we're typically talking about specific numbers of electrons being lost. You'll find them in groups 1A through 3A. Um, what we find with these um, elements is that 1A elements will always lose one valence electron and one valence electron only. 2A elements will lose two electrons uh, and will have a, a resultant charge of plus two. In chemistry, we write the number first and then the positive or negative charge just notation. 3A metals will lose three valence electrons. Group two, uh, sorry, group B elements will, will generally lose two electrons and have a plus two charge, although there's some exceptions to this, which we talked a little bit about uh, in terms of stability with, with, with configurations that don't follow the rules. Um, in this figure on the right, here is our sodium atom and this is the sodium ion. So this electron is now gone. So notice that a layer of electrons are gone. Also notice that the charge of the sodium ion and also notice the change in configuration which matches the nearest noble gas to sodium. So here is basically what happens with ion formation. If we're talking about a two-way element it would lose two electrons. A three element would show a loss of three electrons. So um on the opposite end, we've got our negative ions, which uh, you should recall is called an anion. And for these to form, they are going to gain electrons instead. And you're going to find these elements uh, in the groups 5A through 7A, not 8. Okay, 8 is noble gases, so don't worry about that. But in group 5A, you're going to lose three electrons, or sorry, gain three electrons. In 6A, you're going to gain two. In 7, you're going to gain one, producing your negative three, negative two, negative one charges. All right. um, as shown in the electron config here, um, in, this, in this example with chlorine, you're going to have, so far in, in the valence shell, you're going to wind up with seven valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's one away from getting the noble gas electron configuration of a full eight. So as a result, it will gain one electron. The electron configuration changes from ending in a 3p5 to a 3p6, and the result is also that its charge will go from neutral to a negative one. And that's, that's it. pretty much it. Okay.